Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, and welcome to Command Power, the show in which we discuss all things Magic the Gathering with a focus on Commander. And today we have a brand new deck tech for you, and just as a quick heads up, this is not a budget deck, although I do think it should be fairly easy to find substitutes for those expensive cards. But before that, just a quick reminder to please click like and subscribe if you enjoyed my videos. We're well on our way to a million subscribers and every single click counts. And today we're going to be talking about Tola Toyak, the Smiling Flood. For four colors, one green and one blue, it's a legendary creature Salamander Serpent 6-6 with whenever Xolotoyak the Smiling Flood enters the battlefield or attack, put a flood counter on target land. That land is an island in addition to its other types for as long as it has a flood counter on it and at the beginning of your end step untap each permanent you control with a counter on it. So this guy is super cute and I'm pretty excited to build a deck around him. There's two things that we're going to be focusing on here. This is largely going to be a deck that tries to win through an alternate win condition but we can also rumble into the red zone as well. We're running a very large number of artifacts that we can can untap with different cards and then tap again to provide us with certain value that can allow us to finish the game quickly or accrue more and more advantages over time. That along with the fact that we're going to be proliferating and putting plus samples on counters on our creatures can give us two pretty good angles of attack that should allow us to finish the game in a timely manner. So without further ado, let's get started. And we're starting off with Adric Mathematical Genius. This is very good with our commander because we can double up on the trigger that it's giving us and since it should be untapping a few of our lands, then that's actually going to help pay for the ability as well. In addition to that, just like in our Doctor Who deck, if we manage to get a counter on this and a counter on something that can produce 3 mana, then we can just get infinite triggers with Solitoyak and it should be pretty easy to finish the game from there. Our Canis the Omnipotent is really good if we can get a counter on it because we're going to get to draw 6 cards per turn which should be pretty solid. Omnicraft Judge is very good in any deck that's based around counters and it's going to draw us a lot of cards. Biofagus is going to help us ramp very nicely and it's also going to put a counter on whatever we cast with it. This can be a good way to get counters onto creatures such as our Canis the Omnipotent. Blooded Contaminator is really good and it's one of our alternate win cons. If we can actually connect with the toxic part of this then we can just proliferate our way to victory. Canker Bloom is a really flexible creature that can allow us to proliferate or deal with a problem permanent. Contagious Vorak can either draw us a card or proliferate. Both of those are effects that we're pretty happy with. Contaminant Grafter is another good way to win the game with toxic and then if we ever have anyone corrupted we actually get even more value out of this card. Crystalline Crawler is going to be very good in a deck with this much proliferate and this many counters. Danny Pink is fantastic. A lot of our creatures actually come in with counters on them initially so they're going to immediately trigger this to draw us a card when we play them. And then the first proliferate effect we do every turn is going to draw us a ton of cards. Deepwood Denizen is going to be close to a Howling Mine if we can't get any counters on it but if we do get counters on it it's a free divination every turn. That's very strong. Defiler of Vigor is going to allow us to put counters on all of our board whenever we play a green permanent. This is a great overstatted card that synergizes well with the deck. Experiment Crodge is going to allow us to do lots of powerful things such as copy Arcanist the Omnipotence ability and it can also just distribute plus one plus one counters onto creatures that don't naturally have them so we get to untap them. Izuri Stalker of Fears is going to be great in this deck. Proliferating twice is really solid especially when we're drawing two cards off of it and if it gets to stick around then it's going to be even better. Fathom Mage should draw us quite a few cards since we anticipate putting a lot of counters on this creature. Flux Channeler is going to proliferate a lot in this deck. We do have quite a large amount of non-creature spells. Goldberry River Daughter is really solid and allows us to do lots of interesting stuff, particularly when we are untapping it an extra time every turn. Jaya Sage is going to be really good at adding mana, particularly when we get to untap it and add a ton more mana that we can then sink into our activated abilities. Angerback Walker is precisely one of those cards that we can sink a lot of our mana into, and then if we have extra mana we can actually sink even more mana into it. Incubation Druid is going to be very solid and it's going to allow us to tap for a lot of mana. Kami of Whispered Hopes also taps for a lot of mana, but it's also going to put additional counters on our permanents whenever they get counters. This is so good in this deck. Merfolk Skydiver can allow us to put a counter on something that doesn't have one to get the train going but then being able to proliferate for five mana as an activated ability is a great mana sink in this deck. Mindless Automaton can allow us to draw a lot of cards by removing counters from it. That's really strong. Primeval Protector is a huge creature that comes up for very cheap and puts counters on all of our board meaning that they're all going to untap with our commander. Great in this deck. Rishkar Pima Renegade turns all of our creatures into mana dogs which works really well when we're tapping them with our commander. Seedborn Muse is fantastic with all of the tap abilities that we have in this deck and it's just a really broken magic card in general. Tekuthal Inquiry Dominus is really powerful because we 
you do have 20 or so proliferate cards, this is basically going to double up on all of our proliferate, and it's one of the ways we can either combo off or just win the game in a fair way. It should also be incredibly trivial to make it indestructible. The Flood of Mars synergizes very well with our commander, since it also puts flood counters on lands or creatures. We're almost always going to want to use this on lands in this deck, although if we do have some weak creatures lying around, it can be good to have another effect of this ability. And that being said, putting it on creatures isn't necessarily the worst anyway, because if they already have a bunch of plus one plus one counters on them, they can then become unblockable with Island Walk. Tawashi Guidebot is a very solid card in this deck. Putting a plus one plus one counter on a creature is great to get the ball rolling, and then we're basically going to be able to get a Howling Mine effect that doubles up as a free divination if it has a counter on itself. Viral Drake is another great mana sink that allows us to proliferate, and it's nice that it's got infect. This can actually win the game on its own if we get a couple of counters on it and proliferate them. Pharrell of the Hulkled works really well with our alternate win conditions, as we'll see in a moment, and it's just a really good card when you get to untap it twice per turn. Moving on to sorceries, we have Ex Expand the Sphere, which is a pretty solid ramp card or proliferate card, depending on what we need. Desert Scambit is going to draw us cards and proliferate, which is great. And the Natural Restoration gets to recur something from our graveyard whilst also proliferating. Moving on to instance, we have Infectious Bite. This is kind of like removal. And then it's also going to put a poison counter on each of our opponents. That is surprisingly strong in this deck because we have so many ways to proliferate that sometimes we can just win without actually even needing to attack with an infect creature. Inspiring Call is there to protect our board and draw us a bunch of cards. Prologue to Phyresis is another way that we can put poison counters on our opponents without actually having to attack. Ripples of Potential is a new card from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan Commander. This seems very strong in the deck because we're going to get to proliferate and phase out our stuff so it survives board wipes. And Vastwood Fortification is just a cheap spell that can put a plus one plus one counter on a creature to get the proliferate train rolling. Moving on to artifacts, we have Astral Cornucopia, which is very good in a deck that is doing this much proliferating. Clock of Omens is going to work very well with a lot of our alternate win conditions. We can basically tap two artifacts to untap a different artifact. As you'll see, we also have a good way to make artifact creature tokens, so this can actually do a lot of work in the deck. Contagion class is one of those artifacts that benefits from getting untapped by Clock of Omens. Contagion Engine is Contagion class elder brother. It's a lot more powerful, but it does cost quite a bit more mana. Doxio Reactor is one of our alternate win conditions. It should be fairly trivial to get this to 20 counters in this deck. The good thing about this one is you don't need to wait till your upkeep to win the game. It just does it as soon as Doxio Reactor has 20 counters on it. So it's quite easy to win with this and also it being indestructible makes it quite difficult to remove. Everflowing Chalice is just like Astral Cornucopia, a great way to make a lot of mana. Genesis Chamber is really good with Clock of Omens and that's the main reason we have it in the deck because it makes artifact creature tokens that we can then tap to untap other artifacts. Listening Sphere is really good just for the proliferate on the ETB but occasionally we might even have the corrupted ability active. Lux Cannon is a good removal piece in this deck. We are going to be proliferating so much that it should be fairly easy to be destroyed destroying permanence with this, particularly since you're going to be untapping it twice per turn with Solatoyak. Magister Scepter is also very good with our commander. It's another way we can win the game as an alternate win condition. Untapping this twice and just having a little bit of proliferate means that it's very, very easy to go infinite with this. Power Conduit helps a lot of our alternate win conditions by removing counters and transferring them around. This is a very good card that puts in a lot of work. Staff of Completion is absolutely amazing in this deck. Most of the modes are pretty good, but obviously the proliferate one is the best. So of Truth and Justice can put counters on creatures and allow us to proliferate, and the protection is also pretty welcome. The Millennium Calendar is pretty similar to Dark Steel Reactor. This one is, again, very easy to finish the game with in this deck, with all the untapping, proliferating, and doubling we're going to be doing. Unwinding Clock is obviously fantastic, since a lot of our win cons require us to tap artifacts. This can help us win the game very, very quickly. For enchantments, we have Hardened Scales. This is good if we're on the fair plan, since it's going to help our creatures grow much faster. Inexorable Tide is one of the best cards in the deck. Once this is in play, every Everything we cast is going to allow us to proliferate, and from there it's very easy to win. And Simic Ascendancy is another one of our alternate win cons. This one is comically easy to win with, but you do have to wait till your upkeep, so there is a small window where they can remove this. For lands, we are including Inventor's Fair. This is a no-brainer, which is going to gain us some life, and it's kind of like a toolbox in this deck. It can search for mana, it can search for a win con, it can search for basically whatever we need. Khan's Bastion is a great way to proliferate on a land, particularly if we can get a counter on it. Llanowar Reborn is a great way to just put a counter on 
on a creature that doesn't normally have a counter. Orin Reef the Vassal is still pretty good in this deck. We have 22 green creatures, so that's still a pretty large number, and this is going to do some work. And finally, War Room is a good way to draw some cards on a land, which is sometimes something we need. So there you have it. This has been Oxolotoyak, the Smiling Flood deck tech, the little axolotl that could and that is super cute and that should be killing people very, very quickly with all of the alternate win cons we have in this deck. What do you think about this one? Are you excited to check it out and give it a spin? There's actually a bunch of different ways you could build this. Another couple of suggestions that you might want to try out are playing Arcbound creatures, which all come in with counters on naturally, or something like a Persistent Petitioners deck where you could just go really nuts and untap your Persistent Petitioners yes. multiple times per turn. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I read all comments and respond to all of them too. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like or subscribe. It really helps the channel. And until next time, take care.